Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel that is Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit. Today's topic is Metabolism of Glycine. So let's see what are the various learning objectives for the today's videos are. First we will see the metabolism of glycine that is how this glycine is uh, synthesized and how it gets catabolized. Then we will see what are the various metabolic importance of glycine. Then we will see the metabolic disorders of glycine and in the last we will see the multiple choice question asked in various uh, entrance examinations. Glycine is basically, it is a non-essential and the simple amino acid or we can say that it is a dispensable amino acid. This is the structure of glycine. There is a presence of amino group, carboxyl group and in the R group there is a presence of hydrogen. That's why it is a simple amino acid and it is also optically inactive. Now let's see how this glycine is synthesized. So glycine is synthesized basically from the serine with the help of removal of uh, removal of hydroxymethyl group from the side chains of the serine. So let's see what is the reaction. So there is a removal of this is the serine in the presence of tetrahydrofolate with the help of enzyme serine hydroxymethyl transferase which require pyridoxal phosphate. So there is a removal of this hydroxymethyl group from the serine. So this serine gets converted to the glycine and the methylene group from this hydroxymethyl group gets transferred to the tetrahydrofolate. So this tetrahydrofolate gets converted to the N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate and the hydroxyl group gets converted to the h 2 So this is how the serine gets converted to the glycine and this is the reversible reaction. So this glycine can get converted to the serine as well. So this is how this glycine is synthesized. Now let's see catabolism of glycine. So glycine can be catabolized into uh, three various ways. First, it gets converted to the serine that's that we have already seen. Second way is glycine is oxidative cleavage into CO2 and NH4 plus with the help of glycine cleavage system or glycine synthase enzyme. Third way is by oxidatively deamination to the glyoxalic acid and this glyoxalic acid has got three various fat. One, it can be decarboxylate, decarboxylated to the formaldehyde and CO2 and this formaldehyde can get attached to the tetrahydrofolate and get give rise to the formyl tetrahydrofolate which can be utilized into various biosynthetic reaction. Second, it can get converted to the malate and this malate will enter into the TCA cycle or it can be oxidized to the oxalate and it can excrete it. So let's see these two things in the detail. So glycine in the presence of tetrahydrofolate with the help of glycine synthase or glycine cleavage system, the methylene group from this glycine will be transferred to the tetrahydrofolate and there will be the removal of CO2 and NH4 plus. So this is how glycine gets a uh, breakdown. Fine. So there is a synthesis of N5, N10, methylene tetrahydrofolate and there is a removal of carbon dioxide as well as ammonia. Now glycine can be oxidatively deaminated with the help of glycine oxidase enzyme to the glyoxalic acid. This glyoxalic acid has got three different ways. Either it can get converted to the malate which will enter into the citric acid cycle. It can be oxidized to the oxalate and it will be excreted or it can be oxidative de oxidatively decarboxylated to the formate which will lead to the synthesis of N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate. So that is all about how this glycine get breakdown or catabolism of glycine. Now let's see what are the various metabolic significance of glycine. So the first significance of glycine is it is required for the synthesis of heme. Glycine gets condensed with the succinyl CoA in the presence of ALA synthase enzyme and that leads to the synthesis of ALA. So that is uh, how this glycine is going to help in the synthesis of heme. So that is the first importance. Second importance is glycine is uh, important for the synthesis of one important tripeptide which is called as a glutathione. Along with the glycine it also requires glutamic acid and cysteine and this glutathione has got various uh, various other important. Third important ring, uh, third important uh, function of glycine is for the formation of purine ring. This is the structure of purine ring for the synthesis of this C4, uh, C4, C5 and N7 part it will be contributed by the glycine. 
fine so that is how this uh, purine ring is synthesized then another significance is formation of bile acid glycine get conjugated with the cholic acid and keno dio uh, keno deoxycholic acid and it gets converted to the glycocholic acid and glycokino deoxycholic acid so that is how this glycine is important for the formation of bile acid another is glycine is important for the detoxification reaction detoxification is basically conversion of any toxic product into the non toxic product so glycine will get bind to the benzoic acid which is used as a preservative and it will be converted into the hyperic acid which is a water soluble so it will be excreted via urine then glycine is very much important for the synthesis of creatine from which creatinine is synthesized for the synthesis of creatine along with the glycine we, re we require arginine and methionine fine so that is how this creatine will be synthesized with the help of glycine arginine and methionine we will discuss uh, this synthesis of creatine in the detail in the next video then glycine is also important for the collagen formation in the collagen every third amino acid will be the glycine apart from glycine in the collagen there will there is a presence of proline and hydroxyproline then for the synthesis of glucose glycine is basically called as a glucogenic amino acid so it will be utilized for the synthesis of glucose and in the lastly it is also constituent of various tissue proteins hormones and enzyme so these are the various by importance metabolic importance of glycine you can see it is utilized for the synthesis of heme it is utilized for the synthesis of glucose creatine glutathione purine collagen for the synthesis of protein for the detoxification reaction it can also give rise to the synthesis of serine now let's see what are the various metabolic disorders of glycine the first disorder of uh, metabolic disorder of glycine is non ketotic hyperglycinemia which leads to the increased level of glycine because it is a inborn error inborn error disorder which is associated with the defective glycine synthase or glycine cleavage system it is due to the defect in glycine cleavage enzyme or glycine synthase of catabolic pathway of glycine so it leads to the increased level of glycine which leads to the several mental deficiency and death in very early childhood so that is first disorder non ketotic hyperglycinemia and glycine level glycine is basically act as a inhibitory neurotransmitter so there will be the increased level of glycine in this disorder which leads to the neurological defect second disorder which is associated with the glycine metabolism is the primary hyperoxaluria in this primary hyperoxaluria there is a increase uh, concentration of oxalate increase concentration of oxalate which leads to the increase excretion of oxalate in the urine failure to catabolize glyoxalate which gets oxidized to the oxalate and this oxalate will get also this oxalate can also get deposited in the urinary tract as well as in the kidney which leads to hypothesis stones in the urinary tract nephrocalcinosis that is presence of calcium deposit in the kidney and recurrent infection of the urinary tract so that is primary hyperoxaluria the treatment of this primary hyperoxaluria is the uh, drinking a uh, plenty of uh, patient has to drink plenty of water so that this oxalate can be flushed out in the urine so uh, we require one enzyme particular this uh, primary hyperoxaluria it is, is of two type one is the type 1 and another is the type 2 and it is a basically occur due to the protein targeting defect the enzyme particularly alanine glyoxalate amino transferase it is located in the hepatic peroxisome but in this disorder it is located in the mitochondria so that leads to the accumulation of oxalate and which leads to the various consequences like uh, nephrocalcinosis nephrolithiasis renal stone fine and the type 2 occurs due to the deficiency of glyoxalate reductase so the type 1 occurs due to the alanine glyoxalate amino transferase while the type 2 occurs with the 
glyoxalic reductase. These are the various sources of glyoxalic acid and oxalic acid. So glycine can lead to synthesis of glyoxalic acid which gets converted to the oxalic acid. We can get oxalic acid from the green leafy vegetables as well and from the vitamin C. Another third disorder associated with the glycine metabolism is glycine urea. This glycine urea is basically inborn error. It is an inborn error which is associated with the increased excretion of glycine, but there is a normal concentration of glycine in the blood. So we can say that there is a defect in the renal tubular reabsorption of glycine. So that is glycine urea. So this is this was the uh, this were the three disorders associated with the glycine metabolism. First one was the non-ketotic hyperglycine. Nemia, second one is the primary hyperoxaluria and the third one is the glycinuria. Now let's see what are the various multiple choice questions. Which of the following is true about glycine which was asked in a Kerala 2008. First glycine is an essential amino acid, sulfur containing at the fourth position, has a guanid guanidine group and it is optically inactive so the true is it is optically inactive and it is a non-essential amino acid which of the following would not act as a source of glycine by transamination so the answer so the options are alanine aspartate glutamate and glyoxalate so glycine can be synthesized from the serine with the help of serine hydroxymethyl transferase as well as it can be synthesized from the alanine, glutamate and glyoxalate with the help of glycine amino transferase. So the answer is aspartate. What is the metabolic defect in the primary oxaluria type 2? So we have already seen the two uh, primer, two type of primary oxaluria. One is the type 1 and type 2. Type one was occurring due to the deficiency of alanine glyoxalate amino transferase and type 2 was occurring due to the deficiency of glyoxalate reductase and the another name of glyoxalate reductase is the glycerate dehydrogenase so the answer is C glycerate dehydrogenase. All are true about glutathione except which was asked in AIMS November 2008. Glutathione is basically a tripeptide. We all know that apart from glycine, there is a presence of glutamic acid and cysteine. Second option is it converts hemoglobin to the methemoglobin. Third, it conjugates xenobiotics and D, it is a cofactor of various enzymes. So it conjugates xenobiotics, it is used in a detoxification. It is also a cofactor of various enzymes, but it cannot convert hemoglobin it converts hemoglobin to the met hemoglobin so it is a wrong statement and it converts it is utilized it is used for the uh, conversion of met hemoglobin to the hemoglobin fine so the answer is b these are the my references hope you have liked my video please like share and subscribe biochemistry basics by dr amit thank you